Beloved Nightingale This tale is of a time when China was ruled by kings. This king had a beautiful palace, and the most gorgeous location in the palace was its lush garden which had flowers of every kind. Some of these flowers were found only in this garden and nowhere else in the world. The gardener would string tiny bells on them. The garden was so huge that if you looked at it all the way, you would see that it led to the forest. A river flowed in that forest, and next to the river, there was a tree which was the home of a nightingale. The nightingale sang so sweetly that whoever heard her songs would get mesmerized. This kingdom was so famous that people from lands far away would come to visit. Writers wrote books about the kingdom, and in all of them, they wrote the most of the nightingale and her songs. One day, the king himself was reading one such book. When he read about the nightingale, he was lost in thought. Which bird from our kingdom is this? I have never heard of it before. He called his prime minister. Minister, what is this that I read? There is a bird called Nightingale in our kingdom who sings so sweetly that it is regarded as the most beautiful creature in our entire kingdom? How is that we have never heard of it before? Uh, Your Highness, I have never heard of a bird like that. Go, find it, and ask it to sing before me in the court by this evening. As you say, Your Highness. The Prime Minister rushed as soon as he heard the King's order. Above and below, left and right, he asked everyone he met in the palace, but nobody had heard of the Nightingale. He went to the King once again. Your Highness, it's quite possible that the writers have written about the bird as a figment of their imagination, and in reality, there might not be a bird like that at all. No! The King of Japan has sent me this book. None of what the book says can be a lie. I want to hear the nightingale sing. Bring it before me by evening, or else the entire kingdom will have to suffer punishment. The Prime Minister had no other alternative. He kept asking everyone he came across about the bird. At last, he met a little girl. Nightingale? Yes, I have seen her. I've also heard her sing. She lives near the river. Listen, if you take me to the Nightingale, I shall get you a reward. On the one hand, the minister went with the girl towards the forest, and on the other, he sent a message to the king that the bird had been found. Both of them reached the part of the forest where the Nightingale usually sang. The nightingale began her song. The little girl said, See? Look there! That is the bird I told you about! The minister heard nothing of what the girl said. He was enthralled by the nightingale's song. Did you hear that? Anyone can forget the world on listening to her song. I have never heard a sweeter song. Truly, the king will be ecstatic when he hears it. My beloved nightingale, come to the palace. The king wants to hear you sing. It is an honor for me that the king has asked for me. I shall surely come. Taking the nightingale with them, they went towards the palace. The palace had been beautifully decorated, and it sparkled with grandeur. The king was sitting on his throne. All the courtiers and noblemen were present. A golden stand had been placed specially for the nightingale. The nightingale perched on it and began to sing. Her song was so entrancing that the king was moved to tears. I want my golden ring to be hung around the nightingale's neck. No, your highness. I don't want anything. That you liked my song is my reward. The king ordered the nightingale to stay in the palace. A golden cage was constructed for her. She was allowed to fly twice during the day 
and once during the night. Twelve soldiers went with her, and they would tie a red ribbon around her neck. The nightingale hated flying like this. This continued for weeks. One day, someone sent the king a box on which the word nightingale had been carved. Surely, this must be a new book written on the nightingale. But there was no book in the box. The box had a nightingale studded with diamonds and gems, and when one tugged at its tail, it sang just like the real nightingale. A ribbon dangled from its neck on which was written, "This nightingale that belongs to the king of Japan holds no merit before the nightingale that belongs to the king of China." Everyone was delighted to see the artificial nightingale. What a treat! So let us make both of them sing together. Both the nightingales were made to sing together, but their combined song was not very enjoyable. As the real nightingale sang whatever she felt like, and the artificial one only knew the songs that had been built into it. It is not the fault of the artificial nightingale; she is simply singing what she has been taught. Then only the artificial nightingale was made to sing. Its voice sounded just like the real nightingale's, and because of her sparkling diamonds, she looked exquisite. The artificial nightingale sang many songs. Some time later, the king said that he now wished to hear the real nightingale. Where did the nightingale go? Did anyone see her fly out? How is it possible that no one knows where she went? It appears that she has left the palace. Everyone in the court was happy that they had the artificial nightingale, to which they listened over and over again, regaling its songs. This nightingale is so beautiful, and she sings so well. Looking at it, nobody can say that it is an artificial nightingale. We are delighted with this present from the King of Japan. Minister, organize a concert next Sunday. I wish that the entire kingdom hears the sweet songs of this nightingale. As you wish, Your Highness. The next day, the nightingale's concert was organized. Everyone loved it, but some of them had also heard the real nightingale sing. Um, this is good, but not as good as the real nightingale. When she sings, one is moved to tears. Bravo! This is so good. No matter how many times you hear it, you want to hear it more. The artificial nightingale was placed in the king's chambers on his bed. The king would hear her songs before going to bed, and she had given her the title of the royal singer. This title was stitched on a ribbon and tied around its neck, and now books were being published about the artificial nightingale as well. Its fame was spreading far and wide. After a year, the king and his courtiers had memorized one of its songs. As soon as it would begin rendering the song, people would begin singing along. But one night, when the artificial nightingale was singing for the king. A sound of something breaking was heard from inside it. The next morning, the king sent it for repairs to a watchmaker. Your Highness, I have examined this machine thoroughly. By singing too much and too often, the wires and connections inside it have broken badly, and if I attempt to repair it, it might lose its tunes. I regret to inform you that it will never be able to sing again. On hearing this, the entire kingdom was sunk in despair, as the nightingale was a source of entertainment for all of them. Five years passed. The king fell sick, and his health took a turn for the worse. The people of the kingdom were praying for the king's recovery. Your Highness, will you please partake of something? What shall I bring for you? The king said nothing. He was becoming weaker, and it appeared as though he could not be saved. He was finding it difficult to breathe. He remembered nothing except sing, 
Sing, my beloved Nightingale, sing. I have rewarded you with so much. You cannot do this to me. Sing, sing. But the Nightingale did not stir. At that moment, suddenly the king heard singing from outside his window. A ray of hope and happiness spread across the king's face. After a little while, the king thought he saw a faint glimpse of a bird at the window. He tried to open his eyes and saw that the real nightingale was perched at the window. She was singing. You came back. Sing, sing, my beloved nightingale. The nightingale sang there for some more time. The king's happiness increased with every note, and it appeared as though his will to live was slowly being rekindled. Thank you. Thank you so much, my beloved nightingale. Why did you leave me? But today, by coming back, you have returned my life to me. How shall I ever repay you? Your Highness, you have already rewarded me. I remember when I sang before you for the first time, you were moved to tears. What can be a greater reward for an artist? The nightingale sang yet another song, and listening to it, the king fell asleep. Looking at him sleep, it appeared as though he was sleeping soundly after eons. The next morning, when the king awoke, the sun's rays were streaming in through the window. The nightingale was perched next to him, and the king looked much better than before. Stay with me forever, my beloved nightingale. Sing only when you feel inspired to sing. I shall never force you again. No, your highness, I cannot live in the palace. Whenever I feel like seeing you, I shall come. I shall build a nest somewhere nearby, and whenever you need me, I shall fly to you and sing for you. Through my songs, I shall tell you everything about the kingdom, but you have to promise me something. Of course. Tell me, I shall give you whatever you desire. You will not let anyone know that I tell you everything about the kingdom. All right, I agree. Saying this, the nightingale flew away and the king realized that we should not cage and imprison birds. They too have a right to live as they please. Nobody is permitted to enslave anyone, and birds look best when they fly free and sing in trees and forests. That is where their real homes are, and not in palaces or inside the four walls of human dwellings. After some time when the minister came to see the king, he saw that the king was not lying on his bed, but was rather standing by the window, smiling. The prime minister rushed out to give this good news to everyone, and the entire kingdom rejoiced.